Hello, my name is Michelle Glover DaCosta, and I am the Lab Business Development Manager for Dense Place Rona Canada. Today, we're going to go over the complete over complete denture design in InLab Software 22. So here you'll see we're in our order management screen and on the bottom of the screen, we have the option to add a new order or add a new case. Add order insinuates that we're going to add in a brand new patient file, whereas add case means that we're going to add a case to an existing patient file. So in this particular case here for the demonstration, I've selected add new case. So you'll now see that I'm in the administration phase. Uh, just like in the InLab Software 20, this is where we're able to fill in our prescription. So you'll see the restoration tab there and the denture tab. So here I have my denture teeth and individual teeth, just like in Software 20. However, you will notice that now I have the ability to isolate one arch for a complete over natural dentition. Um, but again, in this video, we are showing complete over complete. So I will select still my two arches at this point in time. Now I'm going to use the denture teeth. So much like in Software 20, when you hover over the actual teeth in question, it will give you a uh, preview of what the mold actually looks like. And they are pre-occluded libraries with the IPN 3D teeth. So when you select your upper mold, it automatically gives you the lower. So here I'm selecting my type of uh, occlusion, either balanced or lingualized. And in this case, I've selected my 33 over 33 for balanced. And then I have selected a medium mold. And again, it gives me the um, upper molds with the opposing lower. So then I select what I'm going to be manufacturing my denture base out of. Now, even if you are not milling, um, always good to just give an idea to the software of what type of material you will be working with. So in this case, I've selected the MCX5 by Densply Serona for milling, and I've identified the Lucitone Digital Fit. I also have the ability at this point in time to add in a try-in. So I'm able to identify if I want a monolithic try-in to be designed at the end of the software before exporting the actual case itself. So when we are in the scan step, of course, this is where sometimes you will be actually connected to an Ineos X5 scanner, in which case the method will default to scan, where you can scan either a model or impression. However, if you are importing uh, an STL file, then you will just have to change the method from scan to import STL so that the software knows that it's going to import a file itself. So here I've changed it to import STL, and I'll select these three dots here and find my um, STL files in question that I'm going to import into my arch. Now you'll see that the system defaults to needing three scans. It needs an upper jaw, a lower jaw, and a bite registration to complete my complete over complete case. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the lower jaw. I've got my upper jaw now imported. So with the lower jaw, I'm just going to give it a click with my left mouse, and I'm going to now change method from scan to import STL. And I'm going to now import my lower jaw scan. Once I have my lower arch uh, imported, I'm going to do the same with my bite registration file. Uh, so I'm going to now import uh, from whatever scanner I used, whether it was an intraoral scanner, whether it was a third party tabletop scanner, whatever it might be, I'm going to now import those into my system. Now I do have the ability to add additional objects should I need to. So with just underneath of where it says bite registration, there's that drop down menu with uh, add object. And I would be able to at that time add additional scans should I need to. Uh, so where this might be handy is let's say you have a bite registration, but as well you have a reference denture, then you could add in a copy upper or lower to be able to copy in additional uh, files. So at this point in time, I've got now my bite registration and I'm ready to proceed. Now I just went ahead and selected correlate just to have the software correlate the upper and lower scans to the bite rim itself. Uh, however, normally the STL file that's already been taken care of by the scanner in which you used uh, for collect collecting the actual records themselves. So I'm gonna now move into the model step. So the very first step of the model phase, much like in software 20, I'm gonna be able to edit my model. So if there's any changes that I physically want to make to my model, if I need to smooth something, if I need to fill in any small voids on my model, I can do so at this point in time. Uh, as well too, if this was something like an immediate denture and existing teeth were actually still present on the actual model itself, I could use what's known as the replace tool uh, to actually virtually extract any teeth that will be extracted. Uh, so that's definitely something that you can do still in the in -lab system is designing immediate dentures. Still with the regular denture workflow, simply adding um, the extra step of extracting the teeth virtually. So the system's just loading my STL files. I am working off of a laptop in this particular case, so it does slow down just a tad. 
So once I'm in the edit model step, you'll see that under the tools I have the form tool where I can add, smooth, or remove material from the model itself. I have the cut tool where I can physically trim something away from the model should I need to. And I have the replace tool which comes in handy to fill in things like small holes. On the far left hand side, you'll see that I can go between my upper and my lower jaw or even my bite rim. Um, but here I've got the form tool and I can use something like the remove option to actually remove material from the model. I can increase the strength if I want um, as well tool um, as well too for the tool itself. Um, and so here you can actually see I'm actually placing a post stamp into the model itself. So that's how if you did take, you know, an intraoral scan or something like that, you are still able to, you know, add in something like a post stamp just by using tools like the remove tool in the um, edit model step. So I'm just going to continue to kind of remove some of that material, create that post stamp, and I can control the size of my tool. Now you can control the size on the right hand side under the tools, um, but you can also hold down your right cursor and move your mouse up and down while on the model, and that will also do the exact same thing too. Uh, so it just saves you from having to go back and forth on the right hand side where the tools are located. So once I kind of create my post stamp, a couple additional items, things like the replace tool. The replace tool, again, comes in very handy to smill in, fill in any small holes, things like that. Um, that really is what the replace tool was designed for. Even items like, you know, if there was an air bubble or something like that. So you'll see here, there's a little bit of an air bubble um, on the actual model itself. So if I double click with my left cursor, single click to kind of tag uh, that line down, and which also helps me to curve it and then double click to finish, I'm able to then hit apply and it fills in using its surroundings to determine um, the optimal, the optimal uh, kind of surrounding tissue. So then I can look at my bite rim as well too. I'm not worried too much about filling in any holes or anything like that with the replace tool. The software does have what it needs uh, in this step now, which is the check occlusion step. Now I did import STL, so if they did come in where they were, you know, not in proper relation to the actual model, I could use that bite rim correlation to adjust it if needed, but I can tell here based on nice marbling on the intaglio surface that everything is okay for this particular case. So now the set model axis step, we're lining up a couple key things here. So on the right hand side, we are lining up our arches within those two horseshoe shapes, representing the upper and the lower jaw. Then you'll see that everything's further broken down into quadrants and sextants. So when it comes to moving on the right hand side, I always recommend moving your upper jaw uh, because your lower jaw will follow suit based on occlusion. So your right cursor will physically pick up your model and move it and your left cursor will curve it and rotate it. Um, so then on the left hand side you've got a better screen of your midline uh, which you can also see on the right hand side from a bird's eye view uh, and then you also have your occlusal plane and your facial lip support from a profile view on the lower left as well too. So those are all kind of working together so you need to kind of look between all screens because this will help the software in terms of where it positions things like the teeth. Okay, so you'll see that later on as we move forward here. So the next step here is the editing of the denture baseline. Uh, now the software will attempt to place the denture baseline here for you, but again, at the end of the day, you are the clinician. You will have the, you know, the best idea of where to actually place this line. So at this point in time, you can choose to delete what the software has proposed and just completely do it yourself, or you can just edit what you want to um, within the actual border of where the software has proposed the denture baseline. So with the edit line step, uh, this is where much like when you're doing a um, you know, crown or bridge or something like that, you're able to double click on the existing line single click with your left to basically tag down that line, which also helps you to curve around things like in this case, the post dam. And then you double click when you get to an existing point on that blue line. Okay, so it's always with your left cursor, you're double clicking, single clicking, and then double clicking to finish. There is also the option to drag the line. So should that feel better to you where you pull certain surface areas on the actual model itself, that can also work too. Uh, it just, it was, it's whatever really feels better to you as the operator. So for myself, I just find I'm more efficient with the edit line, uh, but you do have the flexibility to change that should you need to. So then you can rotate your model with your left and right cursor. So your left will allow you to kind of tilt and rotate the model. Your right will physically allow you to pick up that model and move it. You just need to be off of the model itself in order to ensure that the software knows that you're not activating one of the tools. So again, I'm just going around and editing and able to go around things like my freedoms with my single clicks of my left cursor. And then I'll double click when I get to the starting point.
Now on the left hand side of the screen you will see that I can switch between my objects obviously my objects being my upper and my lower scans so I'll be able to switch between my upper jaw now to my lower jaw to fix the lower um, proposal of the denture baseline. So this is essentially where the border of my denture base will finish. So you want to ensure that it, you know, takes into consideration the frenums, you know, anything to do with the vestibule, uh, all those components, because that will affect obviously the fit of the final denture. So with the drag line option here, um, you can see that you highlight the area, um, it kind of defaults to a certain size, and then you can hold your right cursor and move it up and down to create a more uh, a larger or smaller area in which you wish to drag. And then you'll use your left cursor just to pull that out or in accordingly. Now again, I kind of default back to the edit line here. It just feels more comfortable to me. So whatever feels more comfortable to you, you can absolutely use um, according to that preference. As well too, sometimes people will choose to just simply delete it and start you know, right from, from scratch, whatever feels better to them. Uh, and again, that is completely acceptable as well. Sometimes people prefer not to rely on the software's initial proposal, which is acceptable. So once you're happy with the border, you're able to, of course, move forward. Um, but until, uh, but you are able to always go back and edit this step after you've uh, got your initial proposal and things like that. So if you did determine that, you know, I can't really tell at this point where I should have my border fit. Uh, not a problem. You will be able to go back and adjust it. You do just need to give an initial proposal to the software so it knows its starting point of where the denture base should sit. If you do need to go back, though, after you have your design to quickly tweak this portion, you are able to jump back into the model stage to do so. So once your borders are um, identified, we're able to move forward to the insertion, access, and blockout stage. So this is where the software is determining post-manufacturing, how does this insert into the patient's mouth? So we're determining where the undercuts are present, if at all. Usually, of course, for a full arch case, there are uh, blockout, or sorry, there are uh, undercuts present. So that's what we can see here in red and green and yellow. Um, however, there are very much minimal based on the current uh, path of insertion based on that direction of the arrow. However, something like the upper jaw with the vestibule taken into consideration, often people will pull that arrow slightly forward to kind of mimic the same way that we, um, you know, manufacture the denture and process the denture itself and, and insert the denture as well too in the patient's mouth when it comes to the upper. Now, there we do have the ability to add blockout. However, the software does not automatically add blockout. If you do add, you have the ability to set a max maximum thickness meaning when you go to add wax, it doesn't go over a certain threshold that you um, give to the software. Now, again, it doesn't automatically block out, but where that can come in handy is certainly if you're doing something like an immediate denture. So the final step in the model phase is the model analysis step where we identify some key landmarks on the patient's ridge itself. What's really nice is if on the right hand side you have the help tool turned on, not only does it give you a name of where it wants you to position the point on the model itself, but it'll also give you a diagram and a description. So I do find that handy, especially while you're learning on kind of where the software is looking for key points, it does allow you to uh, give you that kind of reference. Now, what I would normally suggest as well, too, is you just use your left cursor and you hover over the dot in question, and then you kind of hold your left cursor and drag the dot into position. And on the left-hand side, you'll see that I can go between my upper and my lower jaw. So now I've switched to my upper jaw to adjust where I want these model analysis points to be. Now, when it comes to the upper, there's one additional step known as the edit labial limiting plane, which is really just a long, fancy way to say the facial lip support line. So it initially got that based on where we position things with the set model axis step. However, we do have the ability to change that should we need. Um, so with the edit labial limiting plane, right now it's set to 5.5. If that was a record that I took physically during my record taking appointment with my patient, I can plug in that number there on the right hand side. Whereas what some people will do is they'll turn on their bite rim or their existing denture, whatever it might be, and they'll use that as a visual to determine, do I need to bring this out or in further for my facial lip support? So that's definitely something that users can do as well. And under display objects, that's where you can turn on uh, your bite rim and then you can make it more translucent with the bar below it. Okay, so that again, just helps as a, another aid as you're designing. So we've now completed all the steps in the model phase. So we're now in the design phase and the first step will always be the parameters. So you can set as many parameters as you want based on the materials that you're working with. 
Um, but what's really nice is you can also kind of determine, you know, how much texture do you want in the vestibular area? Um, you know, do you want a lot of root variation to kind of mimic, you know, festooning and things like that? So you can really, you know, make it smooth and have the software automatically propose very smooth. Or you can have the software automatically propose, you know, really detailed uh, vestibular festooning and things like that as well, too. OK, so you do have the flexibility to change that for the upper jaw. You also do have the ability to make a smooth palette or one that uh, follows the rugae. So you have both options available to you. So once you determine your parameters, and again, it's important to note what the manufacturer recommends, uh, you are able to move forward to the adjust morphology step. So again, we had to choose teeth at the beginning of the software um, stage, just so the software can plug in something here now for us in terms of the tooth setup. However, you do have the ability to change them here now. So you're never locked to what you chose initially in the administration. You do have the ability to you know, move um, at this point and switch the actual teeth if you want to. Now this message that's coming up, it's just identifying that there's a little bit of a gap currently between the molds that I've selected for my anteriors versus my posteriors. I'm not too worried about it in this stage because I can change that in positioning. However, on the right hand side, if there were any molds that I physically wanted to change or if I wanted to even change the type of occlusion, I could do that here in this step. So once you move forward to the positioning step, exactly as the name would suggest, it's where I can change the positioning of any of my teeth. So typically what I do as step one is I like to select harmonic setting, which what it does is it closes up any gaps that are, might be present between my anterior and posterior uh, molds. So again, I had that message that came up identifying that there were gaps between the molds that I selected. So that now just closed up all the gaps nicely. And then at this point, if I hold my shift key on my keyboard and highlight each of the types of teeth, so the lower anteriors, upper anteriors, left and right posteriors, I then want to turn on linear. That's very important to turn on linear. What it does is it locks all the teeth together so that in one fluid motion, I'm able to actually move my teeth. I'm able to tilt my teeth if I need to move them up or down, rotate them, whatever it might be. So again, at this point in time, the linear option, very key when you're grouping teeth together um, because you're usually only hovering over one tooth for the movement itself. So you want the linear checked off so it groups all of them together. So whatever movement you make, it makes to all of them in one fluid motion. Okay, so that's again, a really key point to always have linear checked off unless you are moving only one tooth at a time. You do also have the ability at this point if you wanted to turn on your bite rim. Sometimes that can come in handy for determining if you need to move the teeth forward a little bit more, if you need to change the occlusal plane, whatever it might be. So you are able to at this point turn that on and make it a little bit translucent with the bar below it. And then at this point I can now pull my teeth forward and rotate should I need to. Okay, so that's very key that you can easily make these adjustments should you need. All right, so then you do have the ability as well to add or remove the second molars. So if I didn't have space for them in this particular case, I do. But if I didn't, I would be able to remove my second molars should I wish. But once I'm happy with the positioning of the teeth, I'm going to now move to the edit denture base step where the software will propose the actual denture base um, aesthetics for me. And at this point, I can change them or add to it if I need to. Um, so at this point, you want to take a look and ensure that there's uh, no issues with minimal thickness. So minimal thickness areas will show up in a kind of a baby blue color on the pink acrylic itself. So you can see here, I added a lot of um, vestibular surface area to the root and the uh, vestibule. So the software has now proposed really well-defined uh, areas there. Now, sometimes it's better to over um, you know, kind of pronounce those things so that you can then, you know, just polish it out when you're finishing. Most materials you finish the same way traditional materials are done um, from Densply Serona. So because of that, things like our Lucitone Digital Fit Disc for milling or our Lucitone Digital Print for printing, they're finished the exact same way traditional denture acrylics are finished. So because of that, sometimes it's almost better to put more detail into it um, because then when you polish it, it, it finishes kind of exactly where you're looking for. Um, but then there's less work involved in you know, adding festooning or stippling and things like that. So then I'm just adding to the edges, making sure that any areas where blue might be poking through, again, minimal thickness based on my parameters for how thick I wanted this denture base to be. I can then add a little bit more material or again, smooth and remove some of the material. So then I'm just going to do the same. I'm going to bring my lower denture now and same thing. I'm just going to add material where I need or smooth any areas where I see fit.
Okay, so again, really easy to kind of hold my left cursor and with the form tool, add smooth or remove material. I also do have the shape tool available where I can physically drag out or in with my cursor, um, the actual surface area that is highlighted with my mouse. Um, so that's an option there. And then if I wanted the software to give me a new proposal uh, or if I've moved teeth and then come back into the uh, denture base step, you want to hit recalculate. So the software recalculates based on where your teeth are newly positioned. Okay, so that's an important thing to note. Now, when we move forward to the finalized phase, something that's very key that's happening at this point in time is the software is generating the sockets for the teeth based on the molds that you've selected because they are specific to the mold because there's a small locator uh, noted on the intaglio surface of these pre-manufactured teeth. So it will fit into the socket much like a Lego piece will. So because of that, you want to ensure that you have you know, adequate spacing there. Um, so if ever you get an error at this point where the software is not able to generate the upper or the lower base, I would say 9.8 times out of 10, it's always because of minimal thickness. So things to look at at that point is, you know, can you open up the bite with the virtual articulator? Can you reposition the teeth slightly? Do you have a little bit more wiggle room to maybe choose a smaller mold so that you have more space? Uh, and then worst case scenario, you might want to look at either using the individual tooth method where you can either print or mill the teeth. Because again, when it's a pre-manufactured tooth like the IPN 3D teeth, um, it will work for about 80% of your cases, but for really, you know, maybe minimal vertical space, you might want to consider milling or printing the teeth yourself because then you'll have a lot more, um, you know, wiggle room to adjust the size of the teeth based on the space that you have allotted for this particular patient. But as long as in the finalized stage, your dentures are able to generate, it does mean that the software was able to propose the sockets without issue. Um, so any last minute changes, you can use the form tool or the shape tool to adjust your denture bases. But again, the teeth are pre-manufactured, so there would be nothing more than changing the molds if you needed to make any changes. Um, but at this point in time, there is the smile design option where you can import a photo of the patient, line up the planes and physically try in this denture to their face, uh, which is kind of neat. Um, now, if you are doing that, just make sure that you do take a picture of them face on with their existing dentures in place so that their lips are not collapsed in the picture because then it will look kind of strange a little bit. So once we get to the export phase, we're going to see our two denture bases with the sockets. OK, uh, and then again, you would purchase your pre-manufactured teeth from uh, the appropriate dealer channel in uh, Canada. Um, and then when it comes to the try-ins, you will also see on the left hand side, you have your two try-in files as well. So the idea is a step one, you can 3D print your try-ins in a tooth shaded resin uh, to be able to physically try in your monolithic try-in, make any adjustments if there are any, uh, or move right to your final dentures as well too. So that's a really nice workflow when it comes to uh, the digital aspect of digital dentures, because a monolithic try-in um, really is going to showcase to the patient exactly, you know, what their final denture will fit like simply because of the phonetics, the function, the thickness really does, does give them more optimal um, kind of testing and uh, record taking for yourself. So here we can see our sockets and you'll see there's almost like these little dimples inside the sockets themselves. Again, that was what was happening in the finalized stage where the software was generating those based on the locators on the actual uh, pre-manufactured tooth. Okay. So again, these teeth would only work in a digital sense, okay, would not work in an analog method because of the way that the teeth are actually shaped. You'll notice that they're almost concave, okay, on the profile view of it on the intaglio surface, and it's because it's known as uh, no grind design. So the idea is that you don't have to grind the heck out of it to fit them into the actual denture base. So then here you'll see the monolithic try-in, okay, so the teeth and the base are actually fused together at this point in time. So with step one, you would export those as STL files to 3D print. Uh, and then if you were to mill your final denture bases, you'll see that on the right hand side, the top option is to export to InLab Cam. So if you are using the MCX5, that's what you would start with. So this has been the workflow for complete over complete dentures in InLab Software 22. I thank you and I'll see you soon for another video.